We all know that life under a football manager can be tough, but even more so, it can get tougher when you work under Jose Marino. Perhaps no one knows this better than Ava Carnero. So let us look at the crazy story about why she left Chelsea and what Jose Marino did to make it happen. Before we move on to the exact reasons, let us first and foremost acknowledge the fact that working with Jose Marino is a really tough job. Anyone who thinks they're going to have an easy life is going to go through a lot of unexpected trouble. As far as Ava Carnero is concerned, we must first really look into where she comes from and how deep her history with Chelsea is in order to truly appreciate the significance of her parting ways with the English football club. Carnero was born to a Spanish father and an English mother in Gibraltar. She was motivated to be a sports doctor when she was 16 years old. She received her medical degree from the University of Nottingham, worked for some time at the Australasian College of Sports Physicians in Melbourne, and earned her MSc in Sport and Exercise from the Queen Mary University of London. So you can imagine that she was very well qualified and knew how to do her job just right. This also means she would not make any wrong calls and was not making any unnecessary interventions throughout her career either. That makes realizing how she had to ultimately part ways even more heartbreaking for all those Chelsea fans that know her and appreciate her efforts for the club. Carnero decided to join Chelsea in 2009 and was promoted to the first team by Andre Villaboa in 2011. She had previously worked with the club's reserve team. She started working for Chelsea during the management of Roberto Di Matteo, Rafael Benitez, and Jose Marino after he was fired. Carnero was reportedly exposed to misogynistic taunts by Arsenal, Manchester City, and Manchester United fans during the 2014-15 season. The lady was almost immune at this point to hooliganism that is typically displayed by football crowds, so that element can also be rightly ruled out. Heather Rabatz of the Football Association's Inclusion and Advisory Board urged fans to report sexism in the game, with the FA promising to take action against discriminatory shouting. Fan sexist shouting has been condemned by Chelsea. Following the vitriol directed towards Carnero, Helen Grant, the UK sports minister, requested that football could be doing more to combat this intolerance and discrimination. The hatred directed towards Carnero was cited by The Guardian's Alex Clark as a cause to eliminate misogyny from both sports and society at large. She was a member of the Chelsea reserve team that helped them win the Premier League and League Cup in 2015. So not only did Ava stay firm, she even succeeded in making much needed changes and getting noticed. But even after all of that, the tougher times were still to come. Marino chastised Carnero and chief physiotherapist John Fern following Chelsea's first game of the 2015-16 season when they faced Swansea City at Stamford Bridge. Marino claims that she and Fern raced to the pitch in order to help Eden Hazard when he thought the injury was not serious. He was even more irritated by the fact that Chelsea, who already had a man sent off during the game, were now down to nine outfield players. Medical personnel are not permitted on the field without the approval of the referee, though they are required to attend to an injured player when requested. Referee Michael Oliver called Carnero and Fern onto the field twice. FIFA and its medical head, Michael DeHoog, have backed Carnero's claim that she was only performing her job. Fern and Carnero were both unavailable for Chelsea's next match, a trip to Manchester City on August 16th. This was, again, not the first time Marino was allegedly inappropriate in his behavior towards someone. Back in 2007, he was accused of calling Mike Riley with curse words, whilst Riley was refereeing a match for Chelsea. This was clearly inappropriate behavior that he was briefly called out for afterward, but no one really cared much since Riley never pursued the case with any meaningful intention to have action taken. Marino was later accused of using the exact same set of abusive words for Carnero, 
as well when she agitated him by rushing onto the pitch. In her claim, she says he used the female and gendered versions of the phrase, which made it even worse. However, Marino claimed that he was habitual of using such words, albeit in an undirected manner. He said it was a regular part of his speech and he did not mean those words for any specific person. He even said that Carnero was outright misquoting him when she claimed about how those words were gender customized. The words translated to son or daughter, in Carnero's case, of a bitch. Marino said that he used the Portuguese phrase for these words and that his players were well accustomed to them, knowing full well that Marino never meant to harm anyone by using them. They were, according to him, a very regular part of his manner of speech. Irrespective, there was an investigation to look into the matter. In retaliation to this alleged discrimination, Carnero left her job with Chelsea, refusing to be subjected to such an abusive and disrespectful work environment. Of course, in her position as a woman, it's not hard to understand the speculations that are naturally going to take place. But at the same time, there can't be any serious denial of expectations from Marino to behave in such a manner either. The FA acquitted Marino of making abusive and sexist remarks at Carnero on September 30th after contacting a Portuguese language specialist. Marino and Carnero were not summoned to testify before the FA. The audio tape had been checked, but did not involve the words that the expert claimed Marino had uttered, according to the report. However, there was still contention to the authenticity of this claim. After contacting an independent language expert, the campaign organization, Women in Football, claimed they were outraged by the judgment to clear Marino, and that their language expert was confident Marino had used foul language towards a lady, contrary to the FA's experts' findings. Greg Dyke, the chairman of the Football Association, and Heather Rabatz, the head of the FA's Inclusion Advisory Group, both criticized the decision to clear Marino. In October 2015, Carnero's attorneys gave notice of a constructive dismissal action to Chelsea. Early in 2016, private discussions took conducted with an employment tribunal set for June 2016 and projected to last 10 days. Two days into the hearing, the tribunal was settled on private terms. Chelsea expressed sincere regret for causing Carnero and her family any sorrow. She also brought the case against Marino to a close. She had previously rejected a 1.2 million euro settlement offer from the club, according to legal documents filed to her employment tribunal. It was also later revealed that Carnero refused to work with the club unless she would also be granted an increase of 40% to her annual salary. But it seems like none of that went through either. At this point, it really becomes a flimsy debate as to why Carnero left Chelsea despite the apology. But in her own words, she cherished her dignity beyond anything else. As far as Marino is concerned, there's no denying the fact that he has fallen out with more than just one person throughout the course of his career. In his defense, Marino said that he was not happy with the medical staff since, even if you're a doctor, it's always pertinent that you understand the game. This was his cause for discontent and the resultant reaction. Carnero, on the other hand, has also claimed that she was simply doing her job and that the incident that took place had a huge impact on her life. As of today, she has retracted to her own clinic in London where she practices sports medicine. Well, what are your thoughts on all of this? Let us know in the comments and remember to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.